what would I do or what do I do? Um, <laughs> so the, the cheat sheet, if you want to go, it's on in, in my book, page 304 is some of what I do. Uh, my, my father and I have been, we're both scientists, so we can read the literature and we make assessments of what might work, what doesn't. I, I agree with what, what both Jennifer and Eric said, um, particularly that the, the intermittent fasting, I've adopted that over my, my life. These days, I'm, I'm even at, at the point where I only eat one meal a day if, if I'm not socializing. And it's made a huge difference to how I feel and my energy levels. I just power through the day and then I eat a dinner at night. Um, but absent that, let me say the, the, the other areas you can improve are uh, move. Just I've got a standing desk. I walk. I lift weights in, in my bedroom at my desk. Uh, build up and maintain muscle mass. You lose muscle mass um, as you get older, of course. And muscle is important for maintaining hormone levels. There are longevity molecules that come out of muscle. And also, if you fall over when you're old and you have muscle, you'll bounce. You won't break your bones, which happens uh, 19 sec every 19 seconds in the U.S. And that's close to a death sentence for an elderly person. So move. The other thing that I know many of you want to hear about um, are supplements. There are supplements out there that Eric and I work on what's called NAD. It's a molecule that goes down as we get older and we need it to boost our defenses against aging controls the epigenome that I mentioned, that clock. Now, I'm not here to give, give advice on supplements. I don't recommend anything, though you can read more about it. But I would say that there, there are some supplements that are promising, and there are some drugs that are really promising, very promising. Um, tens of thousands of people who have taken the drug metformin, which is a type two diabetes drug to control blood sugar, um, time and time again in studies are shown to be protected against diseases, not just type 2 diabetes, but cancer, heart disease, and Alzheimer's, and even frailty. And there's a lot of interest and in, in some studies that are uh, ongoing that will test whether this is, this is truly slowing down aging. But at the very least, these drugs are showing us that it very likely is possible that we can go on a regimen that your doctor could prescribe that would give you an extra five, maybe even 10 years of healthier life. Besides that, if you just do what your doctor says, eat well, eat less, don't smoke, don't over drink, get good rest, get friends, don't stress. That gives you 15 years of extra life compared to someone who doesn't do those things. It's easy. We just don't do them. Well, you know, I'm, I'm on record, so I'll tell you. So resveratrol is the red wine molecule, 2003. I've been taking it ever since. I'm now, you know, for the last 15 years, I think we, that is, I've been taking that. Uh, there's, there's an NAD booster, which Eric and I have worked on. Um, you can read about it. If, by the way, if you see my face on supplement websites, I don't endorse or sell supplements. It's people using my name without my permission, but but I do believe that NAD levels are important for longevity. Um, and I also take metformin. Um, and so I, I don't regret that. I, biologically, I've measured my biochemistry every few months, a company called Inside Tracker, who I consult for. And I, my calculated, let's call it estimated biological age based on those biomarkers has been going down steadily over 10 years. So I monitor things. And to Eric's point, you, you can't control or or optimize what you don't measure. So we, we do need to measure things just the way we do with the markets. And uh, the idea of going to the doctor once a year is seems medieval to me. We should be measuring our bodies a thousand times a second, which I can do with a biomonitor and that's coming too. Scientists like us, we're publishing in the top scientific journals, in the top 10. Uh, you wanna find that because there's a lot of people who claim that they can do things and they're selling things, uh, selling ideas, but you've got to start with good science. And so aging, Research really is at the forefront of biology now. There have been two Nobel Prizes awarded related to aging. There's probably more coming, but you've got to start with that. That's the basis. Uh, and then, of course, you, you look at the usual things. But what's exciting is that, that there are dozens of companies that are working on the science of longevity to make medicines. Now, these are not medicines that will initially be used to treat aging unless the FDA suddenly changes its rules. I don't think that's going to happen for a few years, but it will happen. And those companies will be ready and then they'll be some of the largest companies on the planet but in the meantime what we're all doing and we have companies that are working on using the biology of aging to treat particular diseases they can be rare diseases they can be um, chronic they can uh, such as obesity uh, diabetes they can be eye diseases for instance the reprogramming stuff we're reversing blindness um, and then you get on the market and and the prediction is that those drugs will be used by doctors to test other aspects, other diseases. And just like the statins for heart disease, it'll start with a small 
such as a fami familial hypercholesterolemia was, was Lipitor, and then it just blew up and became one of the world's best-selling drugs, and Pfizer became very wealthy. That's what we're expecting to happen here. Um, and But we have to stay laser-focused. We cannot take on aging initially. We have to go for the fastest, most efficient way onto the market, which are often those diseases I mentioned.